Right, so if you stumbled across this uh, series, or this episode, chances are you want to become a great animator. Now, am I a great animator? Am I hell? I'm struggling, just probably just like you. However, I do want to become a great animator. So how do you become a great animator? In my opinion, study the great animators. So in this series, what we do is we look at some of the the work process, etc., um, of some of the great animators, such as uh, Ollie Johnson, Frank Thomas, Milt, Carl, and among others. And we look at some of the old animations, you know, Akira, um, Sword in the Stone. The list goes on, but all of the great stuff, Fantasia. But we also do a deep dive and we look at Under the Bonnet and we look at some of the sequences, keyframes, etc., etc. I also, because I am a, I have worked in the animation industry for a number of years, mainly doing three D stuff. However, I did do uh, in the early early years, did do a bit of two D. But at the moment, I'm very rusty, but I'm trying to get back into it. So, um, I also, in this series, point out some of the tips and trips that I've learned along my journey, along the way, uh, that, you know, in my, in my own journey. And I try and impart that to you. And in this uh, very first episode, we're going to look at, in my view, one of the most important lessons in animation, which is often overlooked, I feel, in, in tutorials. And that, you know, they talk about the principles of animation, squash, stretch, etc., anticipation, yada, yada, yada. But nobody really talks about the fundamentals such as shooting on singles, shooting on doubles. Um, and in this, and also, we're go, so we're going to talk about that in this episode. We're also going to just talk about, just very briefly and very quickly, we're going to it in depth uh, in another episode. But we're also going to talk about the pelvis movement. See, the pelvis movement is really, really important. But as I say, before we get get into the pelvis movement, let's uh, start. Let's start about the ones and the twos. Let's get into the ones and twos. That's in one frames and two frames. But before we get into the ones and twos, it's important that you, we understand a bit of the theory of animation. So back in the day when Film started first becoming mainstream. They used to shoot 24 frames per second. So when the Disney animators um, started shooting, they would shoot like film was basically to create the, how, how do you put it? To create the illusion of life. How, how, this is how to put it. To create the illusion of life, um, film is shot in the early days, it was shot 24 frames per second. And when you speed this up, it gives you the illusion of movement. So you've got 24 single images played very quickly. And this basically gives uh, the, the viewer the idea of seeing motion, you know, moving the moving picture. That's the moving picture. So that was 24 frames per second. So obviously when animators saw this, they then started doing their, their frames, 24 frames per second. And obviously the Disney pioneers, Disney himself, uh, they used to shoot 24 frames per second. Now, for me to to really get into it, and to, I'm trying to, I'm going to try and break it down and explain it to you. What's what 24 frames per second is shooting on singles and shooting in doubles? Okay. So one of my first jobs as a uh, in the animation industry. I used to work for a, a company called Felix, Felix Films a very long time ago as a, a runner. I was only working there for a couple of weeks, just as a runner. Um, and when I was getting the biscuits for the animators, etc., and the coffees, I would hear people talk, I heard animators talk about shooting on ones and shooting on twos. And I, I didn't quite understand it. And then... Um, they used to shoot stuff on the in the back in the day on a rostrum camera, and then I had the small little animation that I I created and and when they explained it to me they said look when you shoot you shoot on singles or you shoot on doubles 
Usually the fast animations are shot in singles to get that nice, you know, that zesty movement. They shoot it on singles and the the other type of movements they shoot on doubles, you know, slower walk cycles, etc. They shoot on doubles. However, you can shoot run cycles on or on movements on doubles. Some studios just shoot on doubles because it saves time. Because you think about it, if you've got to draw 24 individual frames, um, and you and you shoot that on on um, singles, it takes a lot longer than if you shoot doubles, which is half the time. Basically, so you're shooting 12 frames for the, the 24 pictures per frame. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually show you what I mean by double exposure and single exposure in a, in a real sense as opposed to just talking about it. I think that's the better, best way to deal with it. Okay. Uh, I'll, look, I'll, I'll, I'll open up a, an animation that I created uh, earlier. And we can discuss it. Okay, so... Okay, so here's an animation that I created earlier on. This is from my scavenger series of animations. It's basically a T-Rex and he's running and I obviously animated it, etc. Now, if we pause that animation and click on it, if we look at this animation, it's shot um, on doubles. So if you look, every frame, it's like a double exposure. Now, if we was to scale this animation down, and it's just, and we're just showing it on ones. Now, if I play this animation, it doesn't really read that well because this, there's not that many drawings in the, in in the. The animation so it's so obviously sh for this to read better for your brain to kind of register it you would you would scale this up so you scale this to um to double exposures so now when we play it you can see the animation as a double exposure so that's what I'm talking about, about single exposures and doubles. And the trick is, um, is to know when to shoot singles and to shoot doubles. This can be useful, not just for traditional animation, but also useful for um, 3D animation to understand the timing. You know, the, the, the becoming a, a great animator is, and a lot of animators, good animators talk about it, is they talk about the timing of animation. Right. So, and. I was, uh, as I say, this, this tutorial is about under the hood and obviously looking at great animators. A great animator who, who, who you may or may not know about is Don Bluth. Now he done a series called uh, uh, Dragon Lay Dragon's Layer. Now um, this was, I think it was in the early 80s or uh, the early 80s, I think he, he created the Dragon's Layer series of games and it went on for a number of years. And when we talk about the if the game is any good or not, uh, let's not let's not go there. Uh, but the animation is of the highest caliber, very, very good animation. And um, I, I don't know, I had a look at, look at his animation recently and, and uh, try to analyze it, as I say, under the hood, trying to work out why why one why is he such a good animator and and kind of trying to analyze it in depth and one of the things I, I when I looked at I was looking at you know he's shooting on singles and doubles and it, I, I'll play the animation and if you look at the animation when, I, when it plays through if you look at it, it's very zippy very fast it's like bam 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 movements just really really quick you know, it's a it's beautiful animation and it's really quick. And I basically looked at it and then I basically um, captured each individual frame to give it a bit of a deep dive. And when I looked at it, I'm under, I get the impression that, not under the impression, 
he shot he shot it on ones. He definitely shot it on ones, not not twos, on ones, and that gave him that zippy zippy animation feel. I basically uh, I I drew his his uh, some of the frames myself. Um, let's have a look out. So I drew I drew some of the frames myself, um, but but this leads me on to another topic. I'm not topic. I'm not going to talk about um, that the animation now that he's animation. His animation is obviously a lot better than mine. But I want to talk about stuff else that I found in animation, and and an important uh, thing that a lot of animators um, or tutorials don't talk about, and that's pelvis movement. Now again. I have had the privilege to work with some people who have been trained by uh, at Disney art schools. And one of the first lessons that was taught to me by one of these Disney animators was um, the pelvis movement is one of the most important uh, movements in your animation. And okay, the guy who taught me, uh, <laughs> He was a bit of a tool, but let's not go there because this is not about personality. Which which leads me on to another subject that you can learn from. If your teacher is not, is a bit of an idiot or a bit of a tool, you can still learn from him. You know, just like perhaps you can learn from me, but hopefully I'm not a tool. But that's what I'm trying to say. So put, you know, personal views on your teacher uh, apart because it's about your personal journey and what you can learn about anyway i've gone slightly off tangent as per usual so let's talk about this pelvis movement we're not talking about uh singles and doubles anymore i just wanted to talk about about a pelvis movement so as i say i looked at his animation and then i just basically drew it myself let's see if we can uh zoom out a bit but as i say i don't want to discuss the the movement really I don't want to get into the... You can look at his animation for the movement, really. But I just wanted to discuss the, the pelvis movement. Now, what I did is I broke it I broke it down into... When I drew it, I broke it down as if we've got a skeleton underneath it. And this is important. And a lot of people don't realise how important it is. And some people say, oh, you draw the stick figure. You No, you got to stop... Get away from saying stick figure. Start looking at... You want to, you want to be drawing these the skeleton structure before you actually fill in the body. It's all about the skeleton structure. But the thing we want to talk about mainly in this part is is this part here, which is the pelvis. Now the way the pelvis faces is is the key. Everything follows. If you if you look at a walk, everything kind of follows the pelvis. The pelvis moves first, and then everything moves afterwards. Usually, in most movements. So. The, the, what I'm trying to get at is the pelvis is kind of the root, the anchor of your animation. So my suggestion is to start with, obviously start with your gesture drawing, but also start with your pelvis. Look, the pelvis is really important. And if you get the pelvis right, you get your walk cycles right. You get everything right if you if you lock down the pelvis. So let's say, let's go through some of these frames. So... Um, We look at uh, this frame here again. I've broken it down, and that pelvis movement it gives you the direction of where his leg is. So it's always that that point. This is what I'm trying to get at. That point of giving you that direction. So the pelvis is the key, and this does go along with 3D animation. If you uh, if you understand where the pelvis is, you can position the leg better. You can, and also pelvis is to do with weight and balance. It's another important factor there. If you if you got the pelvis is the the, the central um, part for weight and balance in whether it's a, a quadruped or a bipedal uh, character. So let's have a look at another uh, frame. And again, if we look at the pelvis movement here, see that movement is facing it's forward. So again, it's giving an indicator of where the the character is is moving. And then we look at the very last frame that I drew. And as I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to. Um, this wasn't a kind of. Uh, this is just trying to show you guys the, the the pelvis, how important the pelvis movement is. 
Right, this is only a very short uh, under the hood for this very first one. I'm not sure how long each under the hood is going to be. But this one's only a quick one. And hopefully you've learned a bit about ones and twos in frame, a frame exposure. Remember that, just a, just a brief overview to, to kind of hopefully get this to sink in. There's 24 frames. When you're doing traditional animation, you've got 24 frames per second. And if you want nice zippy animation, maybe you, sh you shoot it on singles or then you might shoot it in doubles. Now, obviously, uh, something I didn't mention, you, sometimes you take, especially nowadays, you've got some computer programs, they, they, they run 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second. I would suggest, forget about the, the new methods of animation, go back to the old school, which is the 24 frames per second. Right, this is wrapping up uh, episode one of Under the Hood Animation Masters.